Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Night Witches, the Rogue Tech campaign. So this is running the latest version of Rogue Tech, and we're going to go through everything just before we start to get into some contracts. I think we got a really great start here, uh, not so much mech-wise, but everything else worked out really well. So a little background about this. Um, this is going to be a non-canon series again. I want to have a little bit of a story behind it if I can, work some some role play stuff in if I can. Uh, kind of go back to the uh, original kind of Rogue Tech series I had. So the first thing we're going to look at is the navigation star map to show you where we're starting off. I want to be able to get in and fight the clans earlier rather than later. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, um, a couple things you'll notice right away. We have access to black market stores. Now, when you start off in... Um, with the yarn yarn uh, folk, you start off at Trondheim, and because I like to flush out my pilots to start with and start with just all um, inexperienced pilots, I couldn't get enough pilots here, so I had to jump over one system. And now I jumped away from the inner sphere because I want to start on the outskirts, and I managed to get enough pilots here. So we have our main pilot plus four others. So which that's the reason why we're here. Uh, that's also the reason why we're 17 days into our um, uh, gaming session. But on the way here, the very first event we got was, do you want to have, like they offered us um, access to black market store for 500,000 C bills. So I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. So we have access to the black markets to start with, which is great. Um, will I be using it a lot? Uh, maybe at the start I will be, but most of the stuff I get, I want to try and capture. Um, so the idea behind this series is that um, when Alexander Kerensky left the Inner Sphere and took the uh, remnants of the Star League out to the clan homeworlds, um, there were several ships that got separated and ours was one of them. Um, the uh, ancestors of the people that are on the ship right now weren't 100% uh, behind uh, Kerensky's mission so they left and they went out to a random uh, system out here and um, that planet was dying so whoever was left over we got back on the, sh the, the crappy ship that we had and we were making our way back to the inner sphere so now we're at Hoffman Hoff Hoffman uh, I, if there's someone out there that can uh, give me a cor uh, correct pronunciation for the for this that would be great but uh, we're at Hoffman right now um, and we've just kind of jumped in and we found out the situation that's going on. We found out about the, the clan invasion, as you notice here, clan ghost bear has made its all its way into the inner sphere and kind of been stopped by house Karita over here. And on this side, looks like Steiner has been pushing back clan wolf. So this is clan wolf. Um, and there's a lot of combat going on over here as well. Right? So I think clan wolf has taken some of these. Yeah. Um, and it's making its way back over here to the uh, Axumite uh, Providence. Now, Axumite Providence, if you know anything about the Lord, these guys, when they left the Inner Sphere, um, they didn't have any military. So, I mean, they um, obviously got some military now, but Clan Wolf is there just eating these guys for breakfast. So, um, yeah. So, we've basically jumped into the, to the system. Um, we have an idea of who these guys are now. Uh, oh yeah, also Ghost Bear has taken all this over here too, right? So there's plenty of clans to fight. Um, we have an idea who these guys are. Uh, we've decided that, you know, we disagreed with uh, Kerensky back then. We still disagree with what's going on now. So the idea is that we're going to use what resources we have to, to fight against the clans. So that's the idea. Now, um, so let's quickly go to, uh, let's go to the barracks first and have a look at our mech warriors. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know what Night Witches are uh, or where the name comes from. Uh, during World War II, there was a group of uh, Russian female pilots that used to attack the Germans in biplanes at night. And what they would do is they would fly. I mean, you can look these guys. You can look them up. Um, they're just I don't want to say insane, but they were just really good at what they did. What they did, what they would do is they would fly in at night, cut their engines and then glide in so all you could hear was the, the the plane the the sound of the wind blowing through the plane as it was gliding in and then they would drop bombs in the germans and get out 
So the reason why they were called the Night Witches is the plane made a sound like it was like a broom flying through the air. So the Germans nicknamed them the Night Witches. So that's where we're getting the name from. I just thought it was a really, really cool story. So that's kind of where I where I chose the name from. Now, the our leader here is uh, uh, Marina Roxova, and she was the leader of the Night Witches. And we're going to give her the name Baba Yaga. Um, it's, another, it's a Russian name you can look up. It's kind of... You could say it's like the boogeyman. I don't really believe it's the boogeyman. There's a whole lore behind the name. You can go look that up if you want, but her call sign's Baba Yaga. And we're starting off with fours across the board. With this version of Rogue Tech, it's kind of important to have a relatively balanced pilot. Uh, each of these skills will do different things. So gunnery is still straightforward. It's basic gunnery, right? Um, but if you look at... Um, Piloting tactics and guts, for instance, we have a little other. We have a few other things here. So we have our, un, our unsteady threshold, our melee chance, right? Um, and we have uh, minus two initiative randomness, which means uh, initiative every turn is random now. So um, this reduces a little bit of that randomness. So you have a pretty much um, uh, a better idea of what your initiative is going to be every turn. Um, and guts. It's got uh, plus two injury and melee resist. Now, or sorry, plus two initiative injury and melee resist. So what this means is if you've been injured, your initiative will drop. So this gives you the ability to resist some of that. So the higher your guts, the, the, the more if you get hit in the head, for instance, you're going to be taking a negative for pain every turn. This will resist some of that. So you'll be able to go a little bit quicker, which is you know a good thing to have. Also in tactics... This gives you plus two initiative and reduced hesitation. So if you if you um, reserve, you get what's called a hesitation minus. So your next turn, um, you'll get a minus on your initiative. So you'll be going later than everybody else. So um, this gives you a bit of a resistance to that. Um, so and also the indirect fire penalty. So uh, what initiative is now in the game? If you haven't played Rogue Tech yet, how they're doing it is it's there's a random roll. Uh, and that's based on the weight of your mech. So the heavier the mech, the lower the roll is. So it might be like two to three, for instance, right? So it'll be either a two or three added onto your initiative. Uh, initiative now goes from zero to 30, as opposed to one to five. So um, a two to three is not a whole lot out of that. If you're in a light mech, it might be something like two to six. So you get a, you have a chance for a higher roll, right? Which is really what you want. Um, and then um, what they do is they add your piloting and your tactics skill onto that. Uh, and then there's a few other things that get added on. Um, so you can have, if you have a really great pilot in an assault mech, you can still be going before somebody else who's a crappy pilot in a light mech. It's not just based solely on the mech at all. It's based on the pilot's skill and a variety of other things. So having a well-balanced uh, mech warrior is kind of good now. Um, having good piloting and good tactics skill, regardless if you're just like a master gunner, it's kind of essential if you want to be able to shoot before your enemies, you definitely want to have good piloting and tactics. Um, me personally, I've always been a, a gunnery and tactics person. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, helps me and my advantage, uh, the way I, I like to play, but um, that's just kind of the way things are now. So I haven't chosen my, my uh, um, second or my main skill here yet, um, because I'm also thinking too that like normally what I do is I have three pilots that have uh, multi-target and they also have tactician um, just because the minus critical hits on this 50% critical hits is a huge number. Um, it's I, I, I find because if you're getting hit a lot, that is like kind of essential. Plus the plus two resolve gain is nice as well. Um, the faster you can get those um, called shots, the, the better off it is. And you get plus one to initiative and tactics rolls, which is which are important because your um, tactics rolls, I believe, influences your sensors, which is something we'll talk about when we get into combat. Uh, the game has changed significantly from Battletech. You can target units that, as long as they're in your sensor range, and you get a certain number of rolls, sensor rolls each turn, to be able to de detect enemies. So, you know, one turn they could be there, and the next turn they could be gone, right? Based on their ECM, uh, what your sensor skill is, what your mech's uh, bonus to sensor rolls are, things like that. So there's this whole um, electronic countermeasures, electronic warfare system is very real now, and I, I, I kind of really love that, right? So it, it makes 
what you're choosing here really really important if you're worried about being targeted from long range um, you could have a whole lance with ace pilot you move in you fire they fire back at you then you fire at them and move away right or you jump in jump out same idea right but because initiative is so random now that whole idea of reserving to turn one um, jumping in firing and then going again and jumping out that's gone that's not going to happen now uh, if you reserve past everybody and then they go you'll find the next turn because you've got hesitation your initiative has dropped significantly and they're all probably going to go again before you so the, really the only way to do that is to use ace pilot right you move in you fire at them you fire at them and you move out that's really the best way to do it now they could be still have a chance to shoot at you but this gives you the best chance to be able to do that and i really like that i i, I really dislike the the reserving to turn one and then you know moving and then moving again it's kind of cheating um but this the way it's set up now i really like the way they've done this uh once again kudos to the rogue tech team for for coming up with this uh uh, new system, the new initiative system. I really love the way it's set up. It's great. So, um, because this is my main pilot, and most likely she's going to be my main gunner, um, which is what I usually do with, with, with my main character, I am going to go with gunnery on this one and confirm. I also get the plus 5% range increase, which is nice too. So, and then none of these other pilots, these are just fresh hires, so we've got no additional points to spend on any of these guys and as you can see we're going to have a real fun time <laughs> with these pilots getting them leveled up so and i really like that too that's why i flush out all the main pilots it just makes it slightly more difficult okay so now that we've got that settled there's our there's our pilots let's just quickly go and look at the way i've got the game set up here uh, just so you have an idea of the way i like to run so we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to difficulty and if you've watched my video on uh, starting Rotec, um, you'll have a good idea of our, how I've already got this laid out. But parts for mech assembly, I always go with eight. If you're just new to Rotec, crank this down to three, right? Uh, I, I mean, I like to go with eight, but someone said, you go with three, you always go with three. And like, sure, if that's the way you like to play, go for it. And I recommend anyone who's going through Rotec for the first time, definitely take three mech parts. Um, I prefer eight because I don't choose uh, mech parts as salvage. I just choose components and I get random mech parts. So the more mech parts there are in the loot table, the better off it is for me in the long run. So that's why I go that route. Uh, mech recovery chance, I just turned it up to 60, just up 10% from what from the 50%. Um, it's very seldom that I'll lose a mech, but if you're really concerned about losing a mech, crank this up to 100%. That way, if your mech does get killed in battle, you'll always get it back. Um, I like it, have that randomness. If you make a mistake, you should pay for it. That's the way I see it. Anyway, di contract difficulty variance. This is the variance in half skulls that the contracts will generate um, when you make contracts, uh, or sorry, when you're, when you're generating contracts new for a planet. So for instance, if you go to a half skull planet and this is two, difficulty variance is two, you'll get missions between half skull um, and one and a half skulls. If the planet if the planet is a one and a half skull planet you'll get different difficulty variance between half skull and two and a half skulls so this is a full one skull variance of contract generation uh, you can turn it down to zero if you want and just have it just contracts for the skull level of the planet um, it's completely up to you uh, salvage i leave at normal contract payments normal you can turn these up if you're new to rotec by all means turn them up it gives you better advantage I always have my commander experience points set to 10. I, I, I'm in the full belief that the commander should have more experience than the rest of his crew. That's the only reason why I do it. Not necessarily to gain an advantage, but because, just because realistically wise, the commander should have more experience. Advanced mech warriors are turned down to rare. That's the pilots that you get at the very beginning. Um, if you want to have mech warriors that have better skills, um, when you first start off, you'll, you can turn this to often. So if you do lose a pilot, you can find a pilot with half decent starting skills. I always turn it to rare because I'm always looking for those fresh, raw, new recruits. Ronin higher chance. This is okay. So this is the pilots that you start off with. They're all called Ronin. They're all kind of named pilots. Uh, you can make this 100%, meaning that everyone that generates um, every mech warrior that generates in the um, hiring hall will be one of these guys, or you can turn it down to to never, which is what I have it on, so that they never generate. Um, 
Mech Warrior progression. I always leave mine on slow, but you can crank this up. If it's the first time you've been going through Rotec, you can turn it up and your Mech Warriors will gain experience way faster. Because I'm playing a long campaign, I like it on slow. Uh, if you want to be torturous, you can go to very slow and it'll take forever, your, forever for your Mech Warriors to, to rank up. Um, but the Mech Warrior exponent and multiplier, this basically means that the more experience they get, um, so the higher level of their skills, the less experience they get from battle. So because they've already, you know, they already been through it all, right? So it, at the lower levels, it goes a little faster. At high levels, it so takes a lot longer. Uh, even at slow, I find it actually moves relatively fast. So at a certain point, this really doesn't make much difference. Starting money, if you're just starting the game out, crank it up if you want. You start off with lots of cash. Um, I'm finding balancing your budget in this version of Rogue Tech is a little more difficult. Um, it's definitely more difficult than Battletech. You can, I don't sell mech components, so when I when I get uh, mech parts as salvage, I don't, I'm not gonna sell any of them. They're always gonna stick in my mech base, so I really have to budget when I do it. You can sell mech parts if you want, and you can make some half decent um, cash that way. I generally don't do it. So economy is gonna be definitely something we have to look at as we're going along. Uh, mech bait speed, mech bait armor speed. If you've got it set so that you have to repair armor, which is the default, um, this is how fast it will uh, put armor on your mech. If you increase the armor, it's not like, like, like let's say you start off with 30 points in a one torso and you cre increase it to 50. It takes time for them to put that on. Um, and it's a, it's a half decent amount of time too in the repair bay. So I find if you're swapping out weapons, it's easy. If you're increasing armor, it takes longer in the mech bay. So just keep that in mind. You can crank it up so it's easy, quick, normal, very hard, whatever. I just usually leave all these on normal. I'm not, I'm not a, a amazingly great player, so leaving them on normal is like just you know, relatively balanced. And then shop selling prices. Um, so this is your uh, desired selling value. So I'm getting 13% of stuff that I sell. Uh, scrap return values is the same, but we're not we're, we're not going to be selling any scrap unless we get a whole mech that we're never going to use. Um, I'm not going to be scrapping anything. Uh, and then maximum shop inventory, you can crank this up um, to 100 if you want. I just leave them on the default. Same thing with the specials for shop, leave it on default. So that's the settings. Um, and it'll always be that. I never change my settings. So uh, the only setting that might change is the difficulty variance per planet. Um, if I was playing a campaign where the the planet difficulty level was based on my difficulty level, like my mech's difficulty level, then I might do that, but in this campaign, the if we go to the star map, the difficulty level is based by planet. So right now we're at a half skull planet, but if you go somewhere else, um, like maybe not. There we go. Uh, uh, Chepineria, two and a half skull planet. So depending on where you go, the ver these these will change, right? So it, the difficulty is based on planet. The reason why I'm going with this route is because I like to run multiple lances of different weights. So um, that's going to allow us to do that. All right, so let's have a quick look at the mech bay now. I know everyone's been waiting for this. So this is these are the mechs I started off with. I haven't adjusted these at all. I haven't touched them at all. Um, so we start off with a hell spawn right off the bat. Let's have a look at this mech before we get into things. This is the mech that I'm going to have Baba Yaga pilot, I think. And it's got a pair of ER medium lasers on each arm, a couple of LRM-10s and a medium pulse. Um, the armor is not quite there. Most likely I'll pull off the jump jets. That's normally what I do. Um, and then move the ammo into the legs. Pull the jump jets off. It's three tons right there. I add three tons of armor just so that we're well protected. Um, but that's kind of my plan for this mech. We're not going to do it right now. I wanted to get into to some combat. So we're going to quickly run through these real fast. I already have a mission planned for today. So uh, the Vindicator, stock Vindicator loadout, the armor is actually pretty good on this version. Um, it's not the double A variant, which is lighter, has lighter armor, uh, and it's faster. This is the regular Vindicator um, with the medium small laser, the uh, LRM and the PPC. So just a stock Vindicator. Once again, uh, stock blackjack, um, double AC2s, medium lasers, small lasers. Uh, Centurion, this is a primitive Centurion, unfortunately, so we're going to have to do some work on this guy, pull the primitive armor so we can get a, a bit more weight back, add some more armor to this guy. He does have a heavy rifle, a couple light machine guns, a mining drill, and some rocket launchers, so that's um, definitely up for swapping things out. I think we'll turn this guy into a brawler melee mech guy. Uh, the fact that we've got um, some um, 
uh, support points on this guy means we can probably put some support weapons in and turn him into a good brawler. Now we've got an advanced urban mech here too, which is I think is kind of cool. It's got stealth armor and endo steel. The actual armor value on this guy is actually really low, unfortunately, but he does have an AC-20 and two ER small lasers, um, and he's got jump jets. So, I mean, we could pull the jump, I think he's only got two jump jets, is it just two? Yeah, I think so. We could pull the jump jets off and add some more armor or whatever, but, uh, or pull the ER smalls off and some of the heat sinks and add some more armor, but we'll see what we're going to do, I don't know, I think we're definitely going to get some use out of this guy, uh, I think it's kind of a cool variant. So we'll definitely be using him. And then the last one is a stock Wolfhound. Um, this guy runs really hot. Uh, he's got three mediums and a large laser. Sorry, I, it's really dry here again. Um, three mediums and a large laser. He can really only fire either the large or the three mediums or before he overheats. So um, we're going to have to do some work on this guy too. So we're going to leave him out. We're going to run with the first four mechs and the first mission that we take here. All right, so now I haven't done anything in engineering yet. So we're going to start that real quick. Uh, we definitely want to get the power systems up and running, so let's purchase that real quick. We got plus one tech points, 90 grand. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is get our second mech bay up and running for repairs. So that's the second thing we're going to do. Um, then most likely we're going to go to a training module, or we might do, um, there's a, a module that comes up right after this for mech bay to get this running at 100%. We may take that depending on our financial situation, but we'll see how that goes. Since we, st we started off with um, zero components in storage, so we go to components, we got nothing, right? So we can't change anything out in our Macs unless we move from one Mac to another. So we've got no storage, we got no nothing. So what we want to do here, we've got a few days before the end of the month. So we're going to go to the contracts real quick. Let's get these Night Witches into battle. So we're going to do Insurrection Interception. It's a half skull assassinate mission. Everyone's familiar with this kind of mission, so we're going to negotiate this sucker and go full salvage uh, and accept. Now, let's get our lance into place. So, um, Hellspawn first. Might as well put the Blackjack Fire Support second, Vindicator, and then Centurion. And we're going to run with Baba Yaga on the primary mech. I think the Centurion... Uh, let's put Mushroom on the Centurion because of the piloting skill. And everyone else has got lousy... Um, lousy skills here so let's get uh sure payroll in the blackjack and then let's put twilight in i like the name put twilight in sure let's run this and see how this goes all right guys here we go assassinate mission half skull hopefully it's vehicles and a mech there's the guy way back there i have no idea what that is I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, just so you know, the uh, developers of Rogue Tech have um, added a ton of new models into the game. So there's like lots and lots of stuff here. Um, they, I think they got it from MechWarrior, uh, MechWarrior Online or something. Um, so there's like tons of new models in the game. All right, so Baba Yaga, let's get moving. Um, you can notice the difference here. We got 15, 13, 12, and 10. That's our initiative. Um, we're going to move up this way. We want to take on the guy's guards first. We're going to end in the woods. So the biggest thing about um, this version of Rogue Tech, um, because you can target an enemy that you cannot visually see, um, it's always been important to have lots of chevrons of evasion in this game. Uh, but it's even more important now because um, if you can't see the enemy and they can see you, they're going to wreck you right so there's two things you need to be really aware of one is your speed keep your speed up at all times um, make sure you're getting your maximum evasion you can possibly get at all times the second thing is be very aware of your cover so just because the enemies have you on sensors doesn't mean they can necessarily hit you especially if you're hiding behind stuff right um, Use woods whenever you possibly can just to reduce incoming damage. Any damage reduction stuff is always good too at range. So reducing the amount of damage the enemy can actually put on you is good. Um, and the most important thing is evasion. See now I can target these guys, right? I got two LRMs. So that once again puts LRMs into a major role. Um, before 
if you had a bunch of LRMs, if you, you know, you could shoot indirect, but it was really hard to hit. It's still hard to hit, right? But now you don't need to see your enemy. You don't have to have eyes on to fire on them, right? So it can make the LRM game really deadly, right? So just keep that in mind. Now, it doesn't give you any advantage to just have all mechs with all LRMs, uh, especially as the, your enemy gets heavier and heavier in weight. Um, but having the well-balanced weaponry on your mechs, long-range weapons become very important. So you can't really just go, like, I mean, you could go with all medium lasers on a really, really fast mech and try and get into combat really fast. But as soon as you get close to them, they all see you and they'll all shoot you even before you can get into range, right? So you have to be very aware of that. So the other thing too is your sensors will tell you what the mechs are that are moving. So notice we lost we lost the Centurion. He was here and he's gone. It means our sensors can't pick him up right now, right? Um, so because we have, we cannot see what these guys' initiative is, we have to decide now, do we want to push them? Because if I move in, they may all go on 15 as well and we may be in trouble or I don't know, right? So I am... Uh, all right, this guy doesn't have that great of armor either, right? So we're just going to move over here. So things that can increase your sensors, obviously, is your skill. Um, skill level with tactics and stuff. Um, also, helmets will give you, or sorry, cockpits will give you a, a chance to increase your sensors. Um, ECM systems will hinder opponent's sensors um, so they can't see you that well. There's all kinds of stuff we can be focusing on to get. Then there's also little um, secondary things you can pick up in the store we'll go. that can give you a little bit better chance. It, they're marginal and they cost a fair bit, so I don't even bother with them. But okay, we're gonna move in here and brace. Blackjack's got some pretty good armor, so I want them targeting him. You. And Shroom, let's get in here as well. But let's get in behind the blackjack. It will brace as well. Trying to get as much damage reduction as we can. There's that Centurion. Boss is moving into. So they got a 45 ton goblin. Alright, I think it's time. I think it's time we do some attack here. Let's get into this guy. See how close we have to be to be able to see this guy? All right, so we're going to dump everything straight into this guy's face and just fire. So we right click on this guy. We'd have no idea sensor wise. We don't know what their loadout is. We don't like we have an idea roughly of how much armor they have, but we have no idea of how much armor they have left. That's all based on sensors, right? You don't, you're not going to have information on your opponents. So you don't necessarily know what weapons they have. So the more you know about the enemy vehicles, um, in your mind anyway, uh, the better chance you have of being able to um, defeat them. Okay, so I still got eyes on that guy. Uh, we're going to move up here. Mm, I think I want to be a little closer. I'm worried about that Centurion. It could be an AC-20 version. Wow, that's really low chance to hit. But we're going to get in here. I want this guy in front of the uh, hell spawn. Good fire on the truck. Um, but I think we'll take the... Well, let's go on the truck. See if we can kill it. Better chances to hit slightly. Okay, we got one hit. We heard something, but we don't know what happened. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but we have no idea what it hurt. Here comes that Centurion. So it has an unidentified pilot on it. Looks like he's got an AC-10. Standard Centurion loadout, it looks like. So the better uh, the better you are at your sensors, the more, you'll, more information you get on each vehicle. Okay, so the Centurion is coming into tank here. Yeah. 760 armor, roughly. Aye, aye. So I 
think we want to sprint. Nope. It's rare that I use jump jets. Well, I almost, I, if you watch my series, consistently don't use jump jets. A couple of reasons. One, the heat. Two, uh, you'll notice here, now I'm a little bit unstable just by jumping. So you got to be very wary of, of that kind of thing, right? So let's see if we can hit the Centurion here. Yeah, we got better chances. We'll fire on the Centurion. So we got to keep in mind my pilots are like gunnery too, right? So it's not like we're going to be murdering stuff early on. Let's get into here. Let's get that heavy rifle. Um, leave the rocket launchers off for now, but let's fire everything on the Centurion. Okay, enemy turn. Let's see what they do here. So you can see how our numbers are switching every turn, right? Our initiative numbers. This guy's panicking. He's a, he's a young pilot. He's kind of panicking. You'll find, though, um, in Rogue Tech, lighter mechs will generally want to kind of flank you. So keep that in mind. When you see a light mech running off to the side here, the next turn he could be coming around for trying, for trying for a back shot. So they will use tactics that way. Um, so just be very wary of, like, aware of that. Um, my LRMs aren't going to be very effective. So I think I want to pull back to make their vehicles less effective. That's the goblin. Yeah, I'm going to pull back here. And we're going to go up to the commando. So, the, the matches will take a lot longer than they used to. Before it was, you close with your enemy, you know, you hit them with everything, you wipe them out, and that's the end. Now it's like jogging for position and making sure you're in cover, and now all these guys are going to shoot at you, so you got to make sure that you're, you know, Commander, ah, shit. you got to make sure that you're in good position, things like that, right? Yes, Monda. So now we got a wound on one of our pilots. Um, just want to see what our chances to hit this guy are. If we can take the Centurion down. Sprinting really kills my chances. I have no idea what this guy's back armor is, but I don't think it's a whole lot. Um... get into here maybe still 10% with the ACs can we get a better shot no I guess we can't we're gonna stay in the trees we're gonna move in here we're really gonna push this Centurion I want him gone uh, I want to be able to deal with these vehicles without having to worry about this guy right in my face so we're dumping everything into him okay one pen on the back All right, Vindicator, uh, definitely do not want to be sprinting, or jumping, that is. Let's move into here, get our stability back, and let's fire on this guy. I want this Centurion gone. Oh, so he's got the same version that we have. Play in the back game. That's the mining drill. It's a good thing we're all inexperienced pilots, or this could be a big, huge problem. Uh, what's my back armor like? The same as his, 30, 26, and 26. Ah, do I want to risk this? Oh, that's a back shot right there. Not a very good chance to hit, though. Let's try and take this. 
and we'll put the rocket launchers on. Dump everything into this guy's back. Let's hope we get lucky here. I think I hit something good. Okay, so he's not having a good day. All right, see what they do. I'm not sure who's moving first yet. Probably that commando. Nope, the main boss. Okay, now the commando's coming in. See, he's trying to move his way around. So we're going to ignore him. And what I mean by ignore is we're not going to pay attention to him. Um, shooting him wise. We're going to maneuver so that we don't have to worry about him. Um... Yeah. So Hellspawn's going to move over. We're going to use the uh, LRMs. Hopefully we can get a back shot on this guy. Maybe knock him down. Just need to hit with one or two. So there's the knockdown. So you're going to see here. Minus eight initiative because of the knockdown. Minus three because of a pilot injury. Or sorry, minus six injury for his pilot injury. So his initiative is like almost nothing now. Alright, payroll. Moving back here. Uh, we're going to try and finish this guy up. Let's go for... We want to try and maximize salvage off these guys too. It's kind of difficult to do, but... Let's try for a head hit. We'll leave the two AC2s. We have to leave more than that off. Two small lasers off. Yeah, just fire the four mediums. Yeah, we're stressing them out. Commander. Let's get down in here. This vehicle, wow, bad chances to hit with that. Small and medium, good chance. What about this guy? Yeah, alright, so let's just do this. And then let's do this. Hopefully we hit two smalls. This guy's really badly damaged. He's only got a few points left, so let's fire on him. Ah, we missed the front. It's like a, a truck with like a couple of machine guns and stuff, I think. That's the big threat, is that large laser. Damage is light. Yeah, 45 is not light, buddy. Um, do we move? Probably. So, we've got like minus initiative on Mushroom right now, so we have to be very wary of that. Make sure she's in a position where she can be covered. Alright, um... Target this guy, gonna go for another head hit. Just fire. On there it is, another head hit. And he bailed out, good. Fuck sucks! <laughs> okay, so we maximized Centurion salvage there. See, this guy's doing the flank run, right? Totally is. Trying for that back shot. So you gotta watch out for the light mechs. It's okay, we're going to try and ruffle stomp these guys, if we can. Taking minimal damage. I saw that. Oh shit. Internal structure damage. <sighs> so once again, he can see us, but we can't see him. Let's get into here. Okay, thank goodness for the multi-target. Gonna shoot this guy. What is this guy here? Doesn't say. And this guy. Uh, a is gonna take both LRMs and B will take the rest of the stuff. I wanna make sure we kill this guy. Okay, nice, so he's gone. I was hoping to have eyes on because I wanna stomp on this guy. We need to be moving full speed now. Okay, we got eyes on now. Thank goodness he missed with that large. So what do we got here? 480 armor. It's the far side that's damaged. 120. Okay. Awaiting orders. Um, I think we need to engage this guy. At full speed. But not turn our back. We'll go. 
Ah, uh, eight and a half, eh? We're gonna take it. Oh yeah! <laughs> we hit with the damn PPC at eight and a half percent. Okay, this is the blackjack. Uh, I wish Twilight was going next. Um, positioning. We're gonna move over here. Make it a little harder for this guy to hit it while he can see us pretty much straight on. Uh, but we want to shoot this guy in the side. Uh, we're just going to fire the mediums. Okay, a couple hits. That might clear the way for the Centurion to stomp this guy. Ready for orders. So we're going to stomp him from this side. And attack. Affirmative. Nice. So you notice every melee attack reduces your addition, uh, initiative by one. Reporting. Just one point. Shit. Where's he going to, though? Over there. Alright, so he's got to get past us. Here comes the commando. We have to ignore the commando. It's Arrhenia. Figures. God damn it. Let's get right up on this guy. Um, we're most likely going to end up meleeing him at some point. So we want to get right on him. Uh, let's fire everything. His leg is really badly damaged. We can't pinpoint it, it's the other side, but we'll shoot everything on him. Okay, maybe we make him unstable, maybe we take this leg. Maybe we can... Yeah, I'd, love to, I'd love to capture this mech. Well, at least get some components. Obviously not going to get the whole thing, but... Uh, AC2s are a better chance to hit, so we'll take those. Leave a medium laser off. Oh, yeah, man. You kidding me? Standing by. This is what I call a team, man. This is what I call a team. Coming through in the clinch. 55% chance with that PPC. We hit at 8.5. Hopefully we hit with 55. Let's fire. Yeah, man. There goes the leg. Ah, we lost the warfare suite. Oh, well. At least we didn't lose the mission, though. That's important. Let's get in. Uh, let's stay on the road. Gives us a better chance to hit. Well, pretty damn low, man. Oh, right, because you were wounded. You are wounded. So we're just going to walk to here. Confirmed. Plus, we got a crappy mech. We got to fix this guy really badly. So we're going to try for the leg. Damn. So that commando's coming in. Yeah, see what I mean? Oh, there goes our right arm. I lost a weapon. Yeah, that was a heavy rifle. Fuck. Let's see if we can leg this guy. God, the leg, the leg. We hit him easier when he was standing up. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. Orders. Moving out. Leg. Uh, yeah, man. Medium lasers. Let's hope we get it. Copy that. My God. He's not going anywhere. Should we go after this commando? Ah, we can't really go after the commando. Can we? Don't think so. Um, can't go too far or too close to him because the PPC won't hit. Don't care at this point. We're going to fire everything. Hopefully we get the leg. Copy that. You miss with everything. Really. Really. What the hell? Yeah, that's what I was just saying. What the hell? Let's try for a headshot then. How much is left in the leg here? We have no idea. Not a whole lot, but I don't think I can get it with the machine gun. So let's go for a headshot. Come on, bail out, buddy. He's still got his two PPCs, man. 
Oh, he's lost one. Okay. Seventy. Warning. Damage critical. Yeah, you think? Just gonna fire it all. He's gonna die, so... The more we attempt to offensive push this guy, the harder it's gonna be. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's kill this commando and go home. What is he using, man? What's up, buddy? Wonder if those are ATMs or something, man. I don't know. Leave the PPC off, fire the rest. Yeah. Kind of what I expected. Yes, Commander. Okay, let's get in here. And AC2s, mediums. How many, can we get the smalls in? We got one small in. Let's leave it off, so we just, we're probably gonna need a second round of firing, so. Nice shooting. Nice shooting. All right, now's your chance to get some payback, Mushroom. Gonna stay in the trees here. Turn our other side to him. Just gonna fire. Dagga, 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 dagga. Two points, nice. Yeah, I improved the confident. Nice. She's like, yeah, man, I can hit you with machine guns. No, 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 no. Critical hit. Critical hit. Yeah, I saw that. <sighs> Good thing we have extra max. Fire everything. Let's just punch this guy right in the face. Going down. Um, yeah, man. Sure, why not? Let's try for a headshot. Goodbye. Okay, so we took some damage off this one for sure. It's going to cost us a bit to repair for sure. All right, so at least we got a payment increase of 45%. We definitely need it. We're going to more damage than that, that's for sure. Um, we get any component damage here. We lost the heat sink. Uh, lower arm heavy rifle, definitely on that guy. Um... LRM-10 damaged, but we can fix that, no problem. Okay. Alright, tons of components, we're just going to leave those. So let's have a look what we got here on the ground. Heavy rifle we could take to replace the one that we lost. Um, primitive armor, no, we want endo steel um, for sure. And probably the XL gyro. Uh, oh, no, we don't, we want the NSS. My god, we want the NSS. So this is like stealth uh, ability here. There's so much good stuff here. PPC capacitor. Targeting computer. So helmet mods you definitely want to try and take early. If you can. See, so if you look at the helmet mod here, right? Gives you breaching shot, but it also... Uh, has a zoom decay range, which is uh, 240 meters. Thermal uh, thermal vision, which gives you a better chance to see. Um, heat threshold of thermal vision uh, is every 30 points of target heat, so you can see further uh, hotter uh, targets further away. 10% increased sight range, plus one accuracy, minus one recoil, plus one initiative. So cockpits have a huge advantage. 
We could take the endo steel, but we have nothing to fill our mechs with at this point. So targeting computer is good, NSS is good. That's definitely going to help our mechs out instantly just by adding them. So we're going to take those. Oh, there's a double heatsink kit here too. Don't necessarily need that right now, but uh, we will in the future. So let's confirm this. So three Centurion parts. Excellent. So that's a nice start. Light machine gun, periphery rifle. Not a great thing, but that can go on the Centurion our, our rocket launcher 10. Internal combustion engine we can sell. So yeah, overall we made out, I guess, okay. We, well, these picks were okay compared to what these were. All right, so there's the uh, planet changes in the war activities. 97,000. So it costs us a lot more than uh, than we got cash-wise, but uh, we're okay here. So let's have a look at our tasks here. So we can only fix one mech at a time. We have to decide who we want to do first. Hellspawn, definitely. And then most likely the Vindicator. Uh, then the Blackjack and then the Centurion. Centurion's got to, we got to re replace the arm on it and fix it all up. So this is going to take a little while. So we'll close that up. So yeah, we've got a little bit, 10 days before the financial report. So we should have another Lance in 12 days, which means one day before the financial report. We could probably take another mission. Uh, let's have a look here real quick. So there is a last mech standing mission we could probably take. Um, and then we'll probably move to the next system. Well, we might take, the, uh, it depends. We might take this one next month. We've got to watch out our, our monthly payment out here, so. Okay, so we'll leave it like that. Get those mixed up fixed up between episodes and get ready to pull off another mission next episode. Now normally when I, what I recommend when you first start out is going into your mech bays. If you start off with a lot of funds, then go ahead and fix your mechs the way you like them. Like pull off jump jets if you want, add more armor, uh, or pull out endo steel from one mech and use it on another. Things like that, right? Um, normally I recommend doing that, but because funds are limited right now, that actually costs a lot and a lot of time. So I'm jumping into things right away and I'll, I'll be adjusting one mech at a time as we go along um, just so that we're uh, not running into financial problems. I find it's a little trickier uh, balancing money in this version than it is in the previous version. So that's something I got to keep in mind while I'm playing. Um, but yeah, so we're going to end the episode here. If you like to drop a like, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, also just drop them in the comment section down below. Um, I always love comments and questions, so just feel free to do so. And until next time, we'll see you all later.